Welcome. After learning the basics about the pumps and their different types, today we shall be going on to learn some fundamentals about the analysis of the various types of pumps. So, in this particular lecture series, we shall be learning about the pump capacity and the pump head, what are the pump characteristics, then cavitation, then net positive suction head and how to calculate the flow rate in a pumping system. So, in this first we come to the pump capacity, by it we mean that the actual volumetric flow rate that is delivered by a pump and it is generally given in various types of unit like cubic meter per second or gallons per minute or barrels per day etcetera. And what is pump head? It is there can be various types of pump heads. Now, we shall be looking at them one by one. First we come to the static suction head. What it means? It is represented by HSS and it is the pressure head at the suction nozzle of the pump at 0 flow rate. That is when the pump is not operating, what is the head? Because we all need this kind of heads because the pump is basically as we learned, it is trying to push the liquid against some height maybe against some pressure. So, we need to know the what are the kinds of pressures available at the suction and at the delivery and that will help us to design the pumps. So, next we come to the static delivery head, it is represented by HSD and it is the pressure head at the delivery nozzle of the pump at 0 flow rate. Now, here in this particular figure what we see that how to find out the static um, suction and static delivery heads. So, here you see that we have two tanks and in this tanks this, this shows the pressure gauge fixed at the two tanks to know the pressure inside the tanks and this is the pressure at the um, exerted on this tank and P A and this is the P V pressure and here we have the S represents the suction side and D represents the delivery side of the pump and here we take some kind of datum and this datum is usually the center line of the pump shaft for horizontal pump. So, we have a horizontal pump, so at the shaft and uh, shaft center we are taking the datum because whichever energy we are going to represent they will be respect to some kind of datum. So, this is a datum we are fixing for the pump and now we find that how we find out this H as a suction line that this is equal to H 1 plus P A by gamma that means, this particular height elevation from the datum and the pressure head and pressure head as we know this is divided by gamma, this is the specific gravity factor which is the product of the density and the gravitational acceleration that is rho into g. So, that is how we are finding the static suction head and then on the delivery side also we are finding it by h 2 that is this much head plus this. That means, the pump is getting this total head at the suction and against and it has to push the liquid against this particular head that is due to the height plus the pressure. So, this is how we are finding this static suction and static dynamic head. Now, the total static head is uh, given by the difference between the static delivery and the static suction head. So, this is how we are finding the total static head. That means, the pump has to push against this particular head. Now, then we have the pump suction head that is given now again we see this particular figure this in this scene we are finding the pressure head at the pump suction nozzle when the pump is under operation. The difference is this when the pump is not under operation there is no kinetic head and when there is no um, uh, flow of the liquid. So, there is no pressure loss due to the friction. So, what we find here now when the pump is not op uh, under operation, we find this is the one which is the kinetic head and this is the one which is coming due to the frictional loss of inside the pipelines. So, that is how we are defining the pump suction head under operation and here we have the HLS which is coming here which is the friction head loss between the suction reservoir and the suction nozzle. This is a reservoir and this is a nozzle. So, between these two what is the uh, frictional loss and here in this thing we have two things EGL and HGL these are known as energy gradient line which is the summation of the elevation the pressure head and the kinetic head and the hydraulic gradient line which is the elevation plus the pressure head. Now, here we have next the uh, pump delivery head. So, once we learn the pump suction head 
this is on delivery side that when the pump is under operation what is the pressure head generated at the delivery side and again similar to the uh, pump suction head we have the H2 this is the uh, potential energy then this is the pressure energy pressure head over here and this is the uh, kinetic head in the in this pipeline between the pump and the you know, delivery uh, reservoir and this is the uh, frictional loss in this particular line. So, this is how we are finding the pump delivery head. Now, when we talk of the total head that means, energy is added to the liquid by the pump between the suction and the delivery nozzles per unit liquid mass. So, this is the total pump that means, to make the liquid flow from a one pressure to the other how much energy needs to be added uh, that is what is given by the total head of the pump. And here we can easily figure out that this is the way this is the potential head difference, this is the kinetic head difference and this is the elevation head dif difference. So, this is how we are finding these things only thing is this one has to know uh, one thing one has to be careful about is that here we are kind of neglecting the you know, frictional head because we are assuming that as if they are same on the both the sides. So, we are kind of neglecting that and now we come to the pump power pump input power, pump output uh, output power and the overall efficiency because uh, we need the power dictates the cost of the operation. So, we need to know the power. So, power input power is given by also called shaft power or the brake power given by B p. Sometimes we also use just p to denote the input power and it is the mechanical power used to drive the pump. And what is pump output power? this is the power added to the liquid by the pump. That means, we are inputting some power to run the pump and the pump itself is adding some kind of energy to the liquid to make it flow. So, the pump input power is given by the product of the driving torque and the angular velocity. The torque is given by T and omega is the angular velocity. Then pump output power is given as the density factor into the uh, flow rate into the head total head and this is the overall efficiency factor which is nothing but the ratio of the output power and input power of the pump and this is given by this particular expression. Now, here we have to know the pump performance characteristics and what, what it means is that it basically is the relationship between the total head developed by the pump that is H, the power consumption, the power the pump overall efficiency and the pump flow rate. That means, when we are correlating the energy given to the pump with the head developed the efficiency of the pump and the flow rate given by the pump these things are the called this the pump characteristics. And it is generally given in a graphical form where we plot the head versus the flow rate then power versus the flow rate and the efficiency versus the flow rate when the pump operates at a constant feed. Now, here we have a typical characteristic curve here. We see on the x axis we have the volumetric flow rate given by meter cube per second. On this side we have the head that in given in meters and on this side we have the efficiency uh, overall efficiency and here another scale is there which is giving the input power and all these things we are plotting with these three curves. We find that the as the flow rate is increasing the head is decreasing. Okay. So, this head we shall find from any flow rate we can find it out from this left hand axis. And next is the overall efficiency we find the overall efficiency first increases and reaches a maximum and then again start decreasing with the increase in the flow rate and this we can read out from this right hand side axis. And lastly we have the power input to the pump which also increases with the flow rate initially and start decreasing at a higher flow rate and this is can be read from this particular axis. So, this is a typical uh, pump performance characteristic curve and this is for the radial centrifugal pump. So, different types of pumps will give us different types of characteristic curves. Now, here we another set the another presentation here we are having the ISO efficiency curves for different operating speeds. ISO means same that means, we are drawing in this one again we are drawing the head versus the flow rate, but now what we are doing that we have different types of operating speeds here and the for 
different operating speeds and all these things 40 percent 50 percent they show the efficiency iso efficiency means these are some contours of the same efficiency and we are drawing it for the different types of flow rate and this is also for a centrifugal pump next we have iso efficiency curves for different pump diameters operating at the same speed so here we find again we have h versus q here and again we have the various contoured plots for different efficiency and here we are plotting the different types of the diameter and uh, we shall see later on how we make use of these characteristic curves in determining the performance of a pump now we come to a very important phenomenon that dictates the pump operation and that is called the cavitation and what is the meaning of cavitation the cavitation means the formation of some vapor cavities from the liquid being pumped at some normal operating temperatures when the static pressure is equal to the liquid vapor pressure that means when you know that any liquid would vaporize when its vapor pressure becomes equal to the surrounding pressure so if this is the same case that if the pressure the static pressure becomes equal to the liquid vapor pressure then what will happen this liquid will start boiling off and when the liquid boils what happens it will form some kind of bubbles and these bubble cavities this formation of the bubble cavities is called the cavitation phenomenon so and it starts at the inlet region of the impeller vents so it when so we have to make sure that the uh, at the inlet whatever pressure is available on the uh, suction side should be much much more than the vapor pressure of the liquid because if the pressure is more then there is no chance of any kind of boiling and so that we can avoid cavitation and why we need to avoid cavitation we shall just see now what happens when cavitation occurs it tends to reduce the useful area for liquid flow in the flow passage because now some of the area is being occupied by the vapor cavities so we will find that there is a drop in the liquid flow rate and as we know the pumps are used to drive liquid and not the gases we are using compressors blowers fans etc to drive the gases or vapors so we do not want the formation of any kind of gases in the pumps that is why we need to avoid the cavitation also the cavitation decreases the flow rate the de head developed by the pump and the overall efficiency of the pump and not only that we also find this kind of cavitation damages the impeller and the casing walls and they create noise and vibration problems why because what happens when these cavities are formed and as they move out of the pump there is suddenly a pressure rise because of diffuser the, the volute section of the pump as we learnt earlier and due to this increase in the pressure what happens this cavity starts collapsing and when they collapse what happens they will hit the casing wall or the impeller in such a high speed that it will st start giving those pitting action that means some of the materials could be chiseled off from the impeller or the casing and this kind of uh, bursting of the of the um, uh, the gases and the liquid ejections from the gas bubbles they will cause this very noise noise and the vibration and it can call cause the erosion of the material so that is how we are going to damage the pump if there is cavity so from all these angles from the operational point of view from the maintenance point of view we always must make sure that we are not approaching any cavitation condition in the pumps next we come to the net positive suction head this is uh, given in short as npsh and this is related to cavitation as we shall see now now this is the pressure to be maintained in the pump to avoid cavitation so we have to maintain this npsh to avoid any kind of cavitation effect so here we have the npsh is more than the liquid vapor pressure as i told you that if we maintain the pressure more than the liquid vapor pressure only then we can prevent the boil off of the liquid and what it takes into account that this takes into account the head available at the suction side suction nozzle sn is suction nozzle then the kinetic head and this is uh, from this we are this is a total head available from this we are uh, uh, subtracting the head 
due to the vapor pressure. So, this P set is the vapor pressure of the liquid at the given temperature at the inlet. And this minimum SPHS required to avoid cavitation is called the NPSH required. So, NPSHR is the minimum NPSH which we need to prevent the cavitation and we should see to it that the actual NPSH is more than the NPSHR. So, generally this NPSHR value is given by the manufacturer and the available NPSH that is NPSHA should be more than the NPSHR that is the required NPSH. And here is the relationship between the two that NPSHR plus there is the P minimum that minimum pressure required this divided by gamma is equal to NPSHA plus P sat A by gamma. Now, this NPSH is available is this and minimum NPSH required to avoid cavitation is, is this. Now, in this now we come to this flow rate in the pumping system. In this pumping system we find that the pumping system what it comprises of? It comprises the single pipe or a combination of different pipes which are laid in either series or in parallel or both. And then we have in the pumping system various types of joints and fittings like bends, elbows, valves, flow meters, etc. And we assume that the pump characteristics and the rotational speed are known and the piping system are completely defined. So, this is the pump. So, if we have all these things defined characteristics and other um, operational things are defined, then we can find out the fluid in pumping system. Now, here is a particular typical pumping system shown here. So, same as we show, saw earlier, this is one tank from which the liquid is taken through a pump and is to be delivered to another pump at an elevation and these are the various types of uh, flow velocities and the L is the length and the diameter of the pipeline on the suction side and this is on the delivery side and here we have the datum. So, this is tank A and this is tank B which are exerting this pressure at point A and at point B. So, we are what we are doing? Um, we are writing just an energy balance and on the suction side we have these all these energies pressure energy, kinetic energy, the potential energy and the head uh, of the pump plus on the delivery side we have this pressure energy, kinetic energy, potential energy and the head loss through the pipelines. Now, here we are assuming that because this um, cross section is very high, we are assuming that as the velocities inside the um, two tanks of the liquid that, is that, the, that the velocity with which the liquid level is falling in the pump, we are that in the tank we are assuming that these velocities are almost 0 or negligible in comparison to the velocity inside the pipelines because the tanks have a very high diameter. So, with this assumption what we do? We now simplify the equations to find out the head and this is how we are writing from the thing that this we under we found is the total head that is there. So, we are finding this head and here we find the total energy loss due to friction. This is given by the friction factor on the suction side and this is given by the friction factor on the delivery side. This plus whatever loss is happening in the various fittings and the valves etcetera. So, th this is accounted for this k. So, this k is the loss coefficient for each pipe fitting for flow through uh, rough pipes at high Reynolds number. This friction coefficient uh, is independent of Reynolds number. So, that so that we can find that we are taking it to be a function of the q square and that is how we are finding this h is equal to c 1 uh, plus c 2 q square. So, we are this is now this is what we are relating that we, we are relating the head with the uh, flow rate and this particular equation is called the piping system curve or the simply the system curve and it depends only on the system specifications and not on the pump characteristics. And the pump flow rate is determined by knowing this h q curve. So, we are plotting h and q uh, and we have to know that in this particular uh, uh, equation, this c 1, c 2 are some constants which are specific for the given pumps. So, what we shall do to find out the flow rate? We shall be uh, first plotting this 
h q curve and on this we shall be which is given by the supplier manufacturer and on this we shall be plotting this particular curve and where the point of intersection is that point of intersection will be the point at which we should be operating the pump and here is the figure we find that this is the pump characteristics which is given by the manufacturer and this is the curve we are generating from the energy balance and wherever these two curves are meeting at this point A. So, what we do at this point A whatever flow rate is there we are getting that point of operation that is the flow rate for this particular pump. So, that is how we are determining the flow rate in a pumping system and uh, these are the various uh, books you can refer to for more detailing about the pump characteristics and other topics which I have covered. Thank you.